Welcome back to Voluntary Values. This is Daryl. And this is Emberly. And we are here every Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. You can watch us on the webcam at lrn.fm. While you're watching that webcam, you can chat with Emberly. She's in the chat room. And apparently some people like the smiley face balloon. Yay! And any moment now, Michael Dean... The host of Freedom Fiend should be joining us to talk about the new movie that was put out, Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1, Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared this Waltz. This is the Central Scrutinizer. This show has been canceled by, by the Department, Department of Acceptable Media. What is Please this? leave the studio immediately. Our men will be showing up to remove you and the equipment for the appropriate relocation effort. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? What, what was that? What was that? That Apparently, was the central scrutinizer uh, from the Department got, of uh, Acceptable Media. So, some uh, like black helicopters circling the studio. <laughs> Beds are going to come get us because we talked about Iceland. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, if they're coming after us because we talked about Iceland... They've not listened to this show more than today. Or maybe it's the Canadians coming to get us for that uh, 15,000 plant daisy story. How, how dare we make fun of the Canadian? Canada's going on strike because of us. My grandmother would know the difference between pot and daisies, and she's dead. <laughs> she's, she's pushing up daisies. That's Michael, a good point. Good to have yeah. you on the show. How are you? Thanks, y'all. I'm good. Um, boy, it, it's uh, I I usually get up for my show about now and drink about fourteen <laughs> triple espressos. So oh I had my. to actually, I had to actually set my alarm to be able to get on the air at two thirty five p.m. my time. It was fun. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I'm glad you gave a time zone where you were because I was about to ask if you were in Guam having to no, know, set alarms to. I'm in. Wake I'm in up. Wyoming. I'm in Wyoming. Uh, are you in Wyoming for Free State Wyoming? <clears throat> not really. I'm I'm not a pledged member. Um, I know a bunch of those cats. Uh, the guy in the movie might be one of those cats, the movie we're talking about. Uh, there might be four or five of them in my other movie, the Guns and Weed movie, mostly nice. on the gun side. Uh, it's <laughs> Wyoming's kind of older and squarer than New Hampshire in a lot of ways. In well, a good way. One a good can way. look at a map to see that Wyoming is much more square than New Hampshire. It is. We <laughs> call it one of, ninety well, degree angles and everything in Wyoming. We call it one of the square states. Yeah, I mean all the square states <laughs> out here. We call states. them, you know, Utah, Nevada, you know, <laughs> Wyoming, Idaho, the Dakotas, Colorado, Montana, Colorado. Yeah, they're all square. Yeah, they're basically for the most part places where you know the average Joe on the street can use a rifle and you know hit the ass on a fly at 700 yards but uh <laughs> and you know you can walk into a gun store buy a gun on the spot load it in the store stick it in your pocket and walk out and it's legal of course it's like also like you know for a joint they'll throw you in prison for a year in most of those states too except right. colorado yeah. and montana uh, i i was living in texas for a while went to I'm a sorry. gun show and a, a similar incident happened in Missouri. Most people walked in to the gun show with one gun and walked out with another one. Wow. Yeah, it's just a yeah, gun they, trading they post. Trading, just trade. Yeah, trading yeah. guns. Yeah, we get, we get bored of one and get another one. Yeah. Hold on, did, did you just crack open a beer? No, I cracked open a... um. Double espresso Starbucks in a can. <laughs> oh, no, how do you drink, keep man. your heart from exploding after I don't, all of those? I don't. I don't. Uh, no, I've been I've I've been sober since '94. I'm a drunk, so I, I don't drink. Kind of thing. Aww. All right. I know. So you guys have to do more of it for me if you drink. Anyone out there listening? <laughs> we will. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll or have I one. will. <laughs> uh, I'll have one for you after the show tonight. Cool. Uh, so. Cool. The gun training with the non-aggression principle. I watched this last week. Uh, Emberly had a copy. She said, we need to watch this. But we weren't able to watch it at the same time. Which is actually good because we you know, didn't... We have not discussed this right. before now. Uh, the, oh, nice. The thing that really stuck out in my mind... Non-aggression principle 2.0. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I came up with that uh, and 
it just made sense. I mean, basically it came up with, you know, actually it was, it was reading discussions on the Free State New Hampshire board about four years ago where newbies would come in and say, the non-aggression principle, doesn't that mean I have to get beaten up if someone, you know, doesn't it mean I just have to go limp if someone attacks me? And people would say, no, it means blah, 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 and explain it. And uh, I was like, everyone, a lot of people believe that about the non-aggression principle. And I wanted to uh, update it you know, to show you don't curl up in a ball. The, the, the 2.0 version is do not initiate, comma, or accept, comma, aggression. Right, but you, you also went one step further in that just because a police officer is about to aggress against you, it is not wise to defend yourself at that point. Well, we yeah, we basically say choose your battles. You know, the the host in the movie and everything that he's saying that's not gun-specific stuff, he and I wrote together. Uh, it was kind of a magical time. He lives about four hours away from me in Wyoming. He came down. You know, we planned it over the phone and, uh, and by email for about th three weeks. And then he drove down and spent three days staying at my house. And it was it was a flurry of activity. I mean, it was like, you know, we slept about six hours a night or less and got up would write out write our script not script but notes for the day film in the backyard then go film out at the range and then come back import the video we had look at it see what else needed to be done or redone and uh yeah i mean he says in it you know well tax taxes are aggression but we're not saying or recommending you should shoot a tax collector you know right. you choose your battles you live to fight another day um the title of it is actually so confusing to some people that a prominent gun writer who writes for like, you know, Guns Magazine and Concealed Carry Magazine and like stuff in your supermarket, who's a buddy of mine who, you know, has blog. I mean, he blogged the Guns and Weed movie before, but he saw the title of this and was like, I don't think I'm going to need to look at this. It sounds like it's saying you curl up in a ball when someone attacks you. Uh, of course, you know, voluntarists, anarchists, libertarians get it instantly and they go, oh, someone made a gun training video that's not aimed at SWAT team members. Cool. Yeah. You know, a lot of gun training stuff out there is either aimed at or feels like it's aimed at the people who are going to be kicking in your door one day. And we wanted to do something for the people whose doors are going to be kicked in one day. Right. And I, I am not a gun guy. Uh, you know, I the only firearm that I currently own is a pellet pistol, and there's a very good reason why. I don't want to fill out government paperwork to let them know that I would like to purchase firearms or what I'm purchasing. Do you have uh, to in New Hampshire? I don't know about in New Hampshire, I don't but think I know you do. there there are federal laws on if you're purchasing pistols well, I believe, those have been repealed with i believe the last you can year. purchase um pistols from individual right, owners from individual and without having to furnish all that right. paperwork. i think there's a guy and in the it's room it's a lot I think, harder to find think, an individual selling the weapon that you're looking to purchase dude, there's a guy there's a guy in the room there who just called me on the phone a few minutes uh, who was i believe uh <laughs> selling an ak-47 a while back i don't know if he sold it yet yeah, we know the who you're guy, talking about. The tall guy so, in the room. Ask yeah, him. so you just have to network and right. find out who has what. And, you know, that's keeping it on the more secret end because you don't want the word to get out so right. much that you're giving guns to your friends and right. selling them between each other. So, so just let, let, let me give a uh, public announcement here. If you're listening to this and you have firearms for sale, please don't contact me because I'm not looking to like necessarily purchase anything at the moment. Nor am I making some kind of public statement about contact me. I want to buy your weapons. Uh, we'll continue with. They can't Michael. see you winking. They can't see you winking. It's radio, not TV. Not everyone's on the. Uh, <laughs> we're not all on the. I can see you on the video scene, but nobody. No, we're not all. You know. Yeah, uh, Michael, if you can hang through, and uh, we'll have you on the last segment here on Voluntary Values on I'd be the honored. Liberty Radio Network. I'd be honored. Welcome back to Voluntary Values on the Liberty Radio Network online at lrn.fm. And when you're on lrn.fm, you can watch us on the webcam, chat with Emily. She's in the chat room. And right now we're joined 
uh, on the show, Michael W. Dean from the Hi. Freedom Fiends is on with so, us. So luckily, no black booted thugs have kicked in the door here to the studio. So we're yeah. safe for now. And we've got, you know, 13 minutes left before the end of the show. So uh, hopefully we can get out. <laughs> we can get out before they get here. So, Michael, uh, at yeah. the end of that last segment, I sort of went on a bit of a rant. Uh, and I totally got sidetracked with what I was going to say. Uh, I, I started off by saying I'm not really a gun guy. and Well, you should be after seeing gun training with the non-aggression principle volume one basic handgun and rifle with Jared Waltz. Yes, very good movie. <laughs> but what I, what I was going to say is the instructional portion of this is how you check if your weapon is jammed. And if your magazine isn't loading properly, he goes into, you know, depth of these are things. If your weapon isn't working right, this is what you can do right. to make it work properly. Yeah. I mean, that's that's very important. Uh, guns are machines and they're they're rather old fashioned machines. I mean, the technology for most guns. I mean, you know, we we're talking about the AK-47. The 47 stands for 1947 in that gun. Right. And he's demonstrating with an AR-15, which is, uh, you know, probably came out about 10 years after that. Uh, you know, they they work on Newtonian physics and, you know, things fail. Think about how many times you've gotten into a car in your life and it didn't start up right away. Uh, right. You know, a yeah. well-maintained good rifle or handgun won't jam, you know, every day. It might jam once per thousand rounds or less, but... You know, if your life's depending on it, when that happens, you need to be able to clear the malfunctions quickly. Exactly. And there's three different types of malfunctions. And he explains how to clear them quickly in a gun battle for both handgun he and He does. And, and he does a great job at it, too. I was very impressed when I saw that. Yeah, Jared, uh, so, Jared's a great guy and he's really smart and he's really mellow. And, you know, yes. I don't know if you guys have watched a lot of gun training videos, but they're generally not taught by mellow people. They're generally taught no. by tough guys who look like they drink oh, yeah. gasoline and like eat Arlie glass. Army. Eat glass for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were some things in the video. Now, I've had gun training since I was about 10. So my, my dad, my stepdad was really into guns and um, he, he wanted to make sure that his kids were safe. And so he taught us from an early age to respect guns Good. and Good. how to use them, but that they were tools and that they were um, not toys. And uh, I, I love the fact that um, Jared goes into the Cooper's color code, uh, which is something that I learned long time ago from my dad. He didn't exactly call it Cooper's color code, but the basic principle is the same. So, you know, you're unaware, you're aware of your surroundings, um, you, you're, you're seeing a potential threat, well, and, then you're and in that threat, then a, you're fighting that threat. A so lot of that great. is just common yeah. sense of being aware right. of your surroundings so, right so it's ever common, since i it's took com it's common sense but um it's it's not it's sort of innate with animals like you know cats right. like think of cat-like readiness think of a cat or a dog you know meow. think about you know most of the time they're just kind of spacing out they're in like they're in you know condition white and then they kind of open their eyes and there's no threat they're kind of looking around but they're not scared that's condition yellow but people aren't so intuitive with that because people live in a world that doesn't have the same threats that it an that, that they believe doesn't have the same threats that animals deal with every minute of their life so right uh most people walk around in condition white i mean you think about most car accidents happen when one or both parties are in condition white they are exactly. just spacing out like you know when you're driving down the highway and you realize you mix your missed your exit by five miles you're like wait what happened you were in condition white you know exactly I learned this technique also in driver, um, driver defensive ed. driving classes, yeah, yeah. you know, to always be aware of your surroundings. So I'm constantly checking my surroundings everywhere that I'm at. So yeah, know, and I think that training from an early age kicked in and I still use it years and years and years later. Yeah. And you and, can live in condition yellow. It's not harmful. Living in condition no, orange will make you insane. But yes, living in condition yellow, you know, is the way to be pretty much. And uh, yeah, he goes over it really pretty briefly, but pretty well in that uh, right. well yeah. enough that you get the gist yeah once you start once you know the Cooper color codes and start practicing in your daily life like he suggests looking at what condition you're in and what you should be in at various times mm -hmm. it becomes intuitive over intuitive over a couple weeks time 
Right. Well, one of the best points that he made in the in the video, I thought, was the beware of safe queen guns. Um, you know, uh, the pretty queen. guns. Yeah. The guns the that live in guns. a safe. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, these... I know a lot of people who've bought guns that have bought these really beautiful, you know, ones that they don't want scratched up and they they're have not takes. jewelry, man. Guns aren't right, jewelry. I mean, exactly. there are guns that are like jewelry, but they're not the ones you want to carry every day. Exactly. Uh, so I thought you know, that was a great point because he I haven't throws, really heard that brought up in any training that I've been in. Oh, yeah. I mean, then, uh, when he throws his gun, reholster. when he throws his gun into the dirt, I mean, that is yeah. really like it's, it's a simple part of the whole video, but it's like. I've never seen that done in all the gun training videos I've seen, and it was great. And he came up with it, and it was like, that makes the point of, you know, what a gun should be able to do and what a gun is. Well, and I also really liked that um, he included in the uh, handgun part the practice close-up number two and number three shots. Um, I have never practiced shots like that, and I don't even recall ever maybe my dad did when I was a kid, but I don't ever recall any formal gun training that I've had with instructors that have ever taught me that. Uh, I recall when I was a child shooting a BB gun being basically taught how to do a hip shot in case yeah. you didn't have time to, you know, and which I, I was never, you know, in a situation where I would need to defend myself with a BB gun but just knowing how to, you know, shoot from the hip without sighting, it's something. It's very important that people do need to learn. Exactly. Yeah, and from a self defense standpoint, you know, another thing he shows in there is shooting from the gun close up to your chest. Right. Most people, uh, you know, a lot of gun people when they practice, they're they're holding it full extension with their arms not right. quite locked, but um, that makes it a lot easier for someone to grab your gun. You really want it in a gun it fight. Sure you want it close to your chest. Or close to your face, you know, so it's harder for the person to grab it. Right. And, and then the that. rifle and then the rifle training portion um, where he talked about holding with your support arm, holding the gun, um, the handle grip better, not the handle grip, but the grip on the gun part uh, to avoid it swinging wildly left and right. I thought was a really fantastic uh, point to make. Yep. And um, this is going to be a series. Uh, I believe Jared is probably going to do volume two. And then there's a, about three or four other people in Wyoming I have slated for the more advanced nice. ones later on. Nice. Uh, what is volume two, if, if you could give that away? Oh, it's a secret. Oh, boy. I hope it has something to do with shotguns. <laughs> uh, I, something Those are that my I, favorite guns. Something that I would like to see. And I don't know, this might wind up being in the more advanced videos. The double clips for the rifles and the uh, jungle clips, semi automatics. Yeah. Jungle where, clips? Uh, it might be called a jungle clip. Uh, I briefly worked for a gun manufacturer here in New Hampshire, and they were actually producing and selling, they called it a double clip. What, where, where one magazine on the is webcam, attached? You can see my hands where they're where one, attached one, and the one's upside down. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's a really common thing uh, in jungle combat in third world countries where they don't have a lot of, uh, you know, where small militia type armies or insurrections or whatever don't have the support that a major army would have of people bringing in ammo all the time, yeah. being able to load stuff for them. They'll take, you know, two 30 round mags, duct tape them together upside down. It's called jungle, you know, jungle clip or jungle mag. And when one runs out, you just pull it out and then stick it back in the other way. So you have, you know, double the ra- double the rounds. Yeah. So do you have any of those uh, made up in your arsenal? I don't have any guns. I don't talk about that. What do you mean? My guns were all lost in a boating accident. <laughs> No, man, I'm just, well, a film- like the, I'm just a filmmaker. I, I like that uh, Jared put in there, uh, you know, I have never used uh, dry firing inside with the plastic ammo that he had. I yeah. would never even consider. I mean, I clean mm-hmm. my gun inside, obviously, um, but everything really? else I've always done outside. I clean my gun outside. I mean, wait, I don't have any guns. I would, I've heard that people should <laughs> clean their guns outside because the solvents are not something you want to be breathing in an enclosed area. That um, does make sense. I do it even when it's cold. I'll go out, you know, maybe in the garage and open a door or something. But uh, yeah, don't clean guns inside, right. man. The solvents they, are really Michael, bad for you. 
Yeah. We've got 10 seconds. Promote whatever you want. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Buy it on Amazon. It's great. Awesome. It is awesome. Thanks, Michael. And then if you're buying on Amazon, go to fpp.cc. Click the Amazon link on the sidebar. This is Voluntary Values. We'll be back next week. Bye-bye. Take control of your money today. Thanks, y'all. That was fun. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. But we'll let you know about it. So. Yeah. This is the unprofessional Freedom Fiends being flaky. Sorry. I got up My like, bad. man, I, I, I usually get up <laughs> right before the show. I got up before the show and did an interview on the previous show, Voluntary yeah. Values, and... Uh, the caffeine's just hitting so me now. I'm just carry awake. carry over Michael Dean. Michael Dean's playing through here. Can't that, get enough of me. That's you know, really big, man. Yeah. I talked to your friend Silver Stacks for three hours last night. He is awesome. On the phone? No, nah, chatting online. He works like yep. night shift at a no-tell motel. You know, so he's uh, on a computer but doesn't have a lot to do except try not to get mugged. So, um, yeah, he and I were up and we were chatting on Facebook for like three hours and sharing videos. I was schooling him about hip-hop, actually. You know, I was like, yeah. okay, this is the last poets. They invented this. Uh, you know, okay, well, check out the- about old school hip hop. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're well, OG he kn- about it. And that's good. Yeah. People should know the history of hip hop. He knows, he knows more. He, he's a rapper. He knows, he knows the current yeah, stuff yeah. way better than me, but yeah. Yeah. But he's tight uh, too, though. Uh, he's that, great. That hook, I that like hook him. he gave me for a new song uh, sounds pretty good. Uh, I, I can't wait to finish the song. Tell is him. It, uh, well, I guess. If is it vocal or instrumental? What is, what does he do? I don't vocal. even know. Vocal. Vocal. Uh, uh, you know, well, I he turned. Made, he made the instrumental too. Uh, he made the instrumental, uh, although I'm doing some other stuff to tweak and produce it. I've actually got it all done, but there's a gap in between. There's a gap before the intro that we need to fill, and I'm going to fill it with I don't know a soundbite or something cool. I don't know what to do yet. So that that's why I haven't Silver Stacks. That's why I haven't sent you the the beat. I'll send it to you anyway, but uh, I'm still working on it. I think Silver Stacks is about the coolest rap name i've ever heard especially for an anarcho capitalist rapper i i told him that and then i said you know it's probably tied with the uh well we talked about dead mike you know the i'm black y'all i'm black y'all which we just kept watching it was like we were playing D- vj for each other for an audience of nice. one it was great nice. um nice. but i turned him on i said silver stacks is a is a is tie for the best rap name ever with the one that i made up that i've been trying to get someone to use that no one's used which is rich black and he liked that so much, he said he may use that as like his alternate non-political, you know, gangster rap, like the Chris Gaines to his. Uh, um, well, the thing with rap is you don't even need an alternate persona to use a different name. I mean, each of the Wu-Tang guys has like <laughs> four or five names. That's just because they're hiding from the man. <laughs> yeah, but no, that that's a long tradition of having a million different aliens. Well, because you know, the, no, but you'll have too, and, you know, they'll have. He's w- not hiding from the man. He Jay-Z almost <laughs> is the man at this point. He's got, he's got a million fucking freaking aliases. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. I think you should fill that space at the beginning of that track with a sample from the movie Telstar about the p- record producer Joe Meek. That's not a bad idea. Well, the song's about stacking silver. The song's literally okay. about silver. So okay, then you should have you like gotta have something. something you should have. Silver, you should like have Ben Prospect <laughs> saying, "Yeehaw!" <laughs> yeah, there you go. I found some gold. Because the gold sample we're using it is, it's almost like a mandolin or a banjo sample. I don't know exactly what the sample is, and you think it would be out of place for hip hop, but for some reason, it <clears throat> completely works. You can use anything in hip hop and make it work, man. You, you can, can make it hard but, too. But but sometimes it doesn't work. This this absolutely does work though. Yeah. So yep. Joe Meek uh, was a record producer in the 60s. There's a movie about him called Telstar, which is named after a hit song he wrote and produced that was about the first communication satellite, Telstar. Uh, uh-huh. Joe Meek led a life that makes Phil Spector look like a Boy Scout. Okay, this guy was a, uh, let's see, satanic, homosexual, speed-addicted, insane manic depressive brilliant genius who like invented sampling and or or like was you know let's see he 
He pioneered studio tools such as multiple overdubbing on one and two track machines, close miking, uh, direct input of uh, bass guitars, the compressor, reverb, echo, and sampling. Uh, uh, unlike other producers, okay, okay. and he had a home yeah, if, you Google, if you Google him, you see all this gear come up in the Google named ads. after One him of is is a Joe yeah. Meek three Q, which is basically like I have, like you gave me. It's a compressor and a, a three channel EQ at the same time. He also um he also murdered his landlady and then blew his brains out with a shotgun. Ooh. Like I said, man, the bath salts. It was the bath salts fault. <laughs> he makes Phil Spector <laughs> look like uh no, man, it was the over the counter amphetamine he used to buy from the druggist in 1961. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a movie about him called Telstar, and uh, uh-huh. his business manager is played by Kevin Spacey. It's a really, really good movie. It's on uh, Netflix. I'd recommend it. Okay. What's the name of the movie again? Telstar. Like T-E-L-S-T-A-R. Telstar, which it's, a, it, it, it's also the name of the first communication satellite? Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. kind of like, you because know. Because he wrote, he wrote songs about the first communication satellite. Yeah, I, th- I think it's an instrumental, or it's barely... Uh, you know, it's just kind of, it was a cool name. It was like people were talking about that, so he wrote a song called that. Okay. Okay. He was also really into, like, it, space technology, the future. He was into contacting the dead. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So is it, is it all, like, spacey, like, David Bowie songs? Like No, it's more like surf with Mr. really Space weird, Man it's like surf it. music from Mars. Oh, wow. That sounds, yeah. that sounds right up my alley, man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the the kind of music he was doing, you know, would seem quaint to you. It's not hard, but it's like he did things with it that were really trippy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey and man, he, that, that's and, the key. That's the key word right there. Trippy. trippy. And his studio was in his home. He, had, he rented a three-story building from a landlady who lived in the building and had like, you know, mics in every room for different effects. And, you know, just, you got to see it, man. It's great. Telstar. Telstar. Is it on Netflix? Uh, yes. Streaming? As I said, it's on Netflix streaming. streaming you can watch streaming. it right now, man. We'll talk about it. We could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Although, uh, I guess I guess during the break I could set up. We could watch it on the No. Cast. No. Oh, no. Right. So last night, this uh, guy from Italy adds me on Facebook, and we start chatting a bit on there. And he says, uh, it's funny to read on a Sunday morning $30 writing school. Google the author for fun. And two minutes later, I'm talking to him. Very cool. And I told him, in two days, you'll be thinking, why won't Michael Dean leave me alone? <laughs> yes, yes. But then you'll settle into a nice rhythm with it, almost like a yeah. Stockholm Syndrome thing. Like me. It's great. <laughs> the <Just>. stalker syndrome. <laughs> the Michael yeah. Dean syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. W, the w, w. So we want to apologize for the like audio static on our last cast. We've fixed the problem, and uh, it'll never happen again. Yeah, we were really sad about that. Although, you know, I still maintain that the actual signal sounded great. There was just some sprinkling of static on top of it. It was yeah. almost like like uh, like your favorite meal. Like it was like a Monte Cristo sandwich, but instead of salt sprinkled on top, it was like dirt. <laughs> um, and what it was was, you know, the chain was fine. Michael was like, you know, do the troubleshooting, go through every piece of gear in your chain. Every cable. why do you make it sound like I'm retarded when you talk about me trying to do scientific research to improve no, no, our no. sound? No, 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 not not retarded. No, that's Michael good. said, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, said. <laughs> I was just saying, you make me sound like saying, the man. No, 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 no. Fine, you're not the man. Uh, fine, you do your own voice. Tell me what you told t- told me. I said, I, I said, okay. I called you up and I'm like, you're like, I got to go out and do stuff with my wife. I'm like, no, we got to fix this. We got to fix this. I wasn't like, yes. dude, we got to do this. I was like, I wasn't dirty. I, I wasn't like a retarded uh, bear I on a cartoon. I, I was, to do a I was like a drill bear. sergeant, man. I was like, let's yeah, fix okay. this shit. Yeah. Screw Fair going enough. out and having fun. I don't care yeah. if it's a sunny day. I don't care that you want to go play. We're going to do this right because we're the fiends, man. We are, man, and we did. And the thing was, was you were smart about it. And, you know, you were going through the explaining the scientific method of troubleshooting audio gear with me. And um, you know, I knew it knew it for the most part because I've done a lot of my own tr- troubleshooting. Um, you know, back when I was uh, a reporter, I started out as the the bureau chief, which sounds big, but it really <laughs> wasn't. But it did mean that uh, I was in charge of all my own gear and all my own troubleshooting. And if something effed up. I had to troubleshoot. I couldn't call the engineer like all the pretty boys in the actual main station <laughs> at the time. I had to fix that crap myself. So, um, but in the end, it wasn't anything in my hardware chain. All it was was mumble 
uh, if there's too much audio going into Mumble, like it's too hot Mumble's Mumble. not made to have the incredible input signal that you and I have right. now, especially right. with your it's rack mount like compressor. It's made for like a little $30 headset with the Xbox logo on it. That yeah, with <laughs> for like, play you World know, Warcraft 12-year-old boys all over the world in their mother's panel right. rec room going, F you, man. No, I'm the king of all the crystal world in the eye of yes, the 17th yes. level. No, I am going to destroy you in my blog on Reddit. You will be, right, you will right. be sorry. Right, pushing the control stick in so they can teabag their dead opponent. Halo <laughs> and such. No, it's not like that. Um, so <laughs> Isn't that control F T B on the keyboard? I don't know, man. <laughs> you don't game. You don't know. You don't, don't know. know. But uh, I don't I'll, know. I'll tell you what, what exactly we did to, to fix it uh, coming up here after we... I don't play it. games, man. I make media. Don't, don't be playing. Don't be playing no games. Worms. Worms. Yo, Nemo. We're on, Michael. I got it. See, I know. I don't need to print it out. I got a tab. Oh, you don't need. You don't in. need to pretend to be still fighting. Come on. That's what you said. You were no, I didn't. No, I did not. You did. Yeah, you Gosh did darn you. it, Nima. I just asked a simple. <laughs> I asked a simple thing of you. I asked you. You don't have a printer, but I asked you to go to go to Kinko's or have your wife print it out at work to print out the LRN PDF of our time clock, so you'd know and you could help me. Because really, I was busy editing. I was busy. I was busy editing my blog post. Uh, I yeah, lost twenty yeah. pounds on the Fiends diet. Which, yeah, if people want yeah. to know how I lost twenty pounds in six weeks, they can go to the Freedom Fiends blog and see. Okay. And you're, we got a big stealing time to, to fix your own mistake, and and at the same time, hey, about it's my mistake. Every mistake either of us make is both of our mistakes. So <laughs> Nima and I were Nima. You didn't make that mistake. We made the country. <laughs> you didn't build that mistake. <laughs> So Neem and I were fighting during during the thing, and then we we kissed and made up. And I was like, "Man, we should we should pretend to still be fighting when we come back." And I think we were pretending. And I think we started really fighting again. But you know, yeah, yeah. you know, we that's, need that's we need a bump. We need a bump of someone else for for like when we do bumps on live shows. We need a bump that says like, "Conflict is the essence of drama." Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. guy from uh, Inside the Actor Studio saying it. <laughs> I'd actually um, like to get him to do it, but uh, so so I did email it to my wife. I am going to print the LRN show clock so we can be better I, about the breaks. I actually but, have an in with the the actor's studio. It would be possible. Yeah. I could at least ask to get James Lipton to do that because, um, yeah, when I did my movie Hubert Selby Jr., it'll be better tomorrow. Uh, Ellen Burstyn, who's you know the mother in Requiem for a Dream and Nose Cubby, and we interviewed her uh, for the movie. I had a friend do the interview. I couldn't fly out to New York to do it, but I had someone interview her there and she wanted to do it on the stage of the actor's studio, which we did. Sweet. And that involved me getting a um, location release signed by the person who's in charge of the building of the actor's studio. Oh. So, uh, so okay. yeah, I could, uh, I have her email somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Although I bet they've probably said it before. We could probably just look up on YouTube clips of the show and somebody said something similar to Does that. Does he say conflict essence conflict is the essence of drama? It would know, James Lipton would so, say it. He would say it. I don't know. If he's he an arrested say, he would say it in his James Lipton way. That would be very <laughs> I liked him in Arrested Development. He was great in Arrested he Development. He was. He was. So speaking of pod beef, um you know, and pod beef is an important part of the fiends diet. <laughs> Mm. Um, mm, pod beef. It was, that's, pod we need a bump for that too. Mm, pod beef. Pod beef. Got to be a lady saying it. Uh, how, how do you cook, how do you cook your pod beef, Michael? Braised, nice and slow. Rare, throw it rare on the and grill. Rare, rare and raw, rare raw rare. pod yeah, beef. Raw beef. beef. Mm. So, um, we had a de denial of service attack this week. Our first ever confirmed like someone went after the fiends web presence. Yeah. Um. And it was weird because usually a denial of service attack, you know, they take over bots of thousands of computers and have each of them hammer away at the main page on your website a thousand times a minute. So, you know, millions of hits a minute and it shuts your website down. This didn't do that. And I caught it after about 20 hours. Um, it was a really weird denial of service attack. It was one IP address in Chicago, IP address 69.47.243.16. If anyone wants to block that. Uh, <laughs> um, we were getting massive amounts of hits on one MP3 file from that one address. I mean, it worked out to like 10 terabytes, 10 yeah. terabytes in, in, you know, 20 hours, um, which is more than most people could do from their home DSL 
So it must have been either a government or someone at a university with access to a huge pipe or maybe someone who works at an ISP. I don't know. But um, and I finally just figured out what it was and blocked. You know, I thought we'd become incredibly popular overnight, <laughs> but uh, we had not. We're just still kind of popular. So uh, I blocked it. But I'm wondering if it's connected to that Chicago teamster who when recently told me when I said that Obama and Romney are interchangeable, he said, I'm going to hunt you down and eat your face. Maybe he knows a tech guy, huh. that, you know, did it for yeah. him. I don't know. He was trying to virtually eat our faces. <laughs> it didn't work. Yeah. Try harder. Okay. No. <laughs> F you guy. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with him? Yeah, that, man, that's that's freaking lame. Why would somebody do that? And and I guess the goal, for those who don't know, is they were trying to uh, have so much throughput that our server folks would be like, sorry, guys, we're going to you know crash the server, basically, or say, hey, you guys got to pay more money if you're going to keep getting all these downloads. Yeah. That, you think what they were trying to do? Maybe. All right. I hope not, man. Um, but either way, screw you guys. It didn't work. You know, if you're 20 and not a liberal, you have no heart. If you're 30 and not a conservative, you have no brain. And if you're 40 and not an anarcho-capitalist, you're a sheep. Huh. So you're saying I have no heart? No, because you're I'm less than 40 and you have an anarcho-capitalist. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 20s. Well, it's just I'm kind of a takeoff on that thing that, uh, what's this? It's attributed to, uh, who's that British warlord that everyone liked? Winston Churchill. Yeah. Yeah. The He's first a part. Lord, isn't he? He did say if yeah, you're 20, you know, if you're young and not a liberal, you have no heart. If you're, if you're old and not a conservative, you have no brain, which is, I th I used to think was funny and true because it was true for me, but it was also like, you know, it's kind of teaching people to embrace their statism. Yeah, yeah, I think it is because he's saying either way, either either flavor of statism, um, you know, that's cool, man. We're all <laughs> we're all some form of statism at one time, statists. Yeah, you should turn up a yeah. little bit. I did, I did, man. You did. I, I really don't want to get the static from okay, from okay, mobile here. So well, I'll just be closer to the mic. How's maybe that? I'll turn down. Maybe I'm just hearing me more because I'm. Uh, I'd rather be a little <clears throat> quiet than be a little hot and have there you go. static. Hot Speaking and heavy. Of that you were saying, man, you're right. You know, Mumble, oh, we, we never finished that. So the way we fixed Mumble was, yeah, we just turned down a little bit because Mumble, if it's if it's too hot, which it wasn't hot in a bad way, like if I'm hearing it, it sounds fine because it's compressed and it's going through all this fancy hardware and gear. It was a great signal, but it was just a little bit too much for Mumble. So we just turned down the input by... Um, more than a nun's cunt hair. Uh, well, we're still looking for hair. we're still looking for a programmer to make the podcasters mumble to make the that's voiceover exactly the point. voiceover yeah. IP utility that's not doesn't need to have all the fancy crap everything needs to have and it doesn't even need to be free. I'd pay thirty or forty bucks for this. Uh, we would, you know, something that like just works so and has a little bit higher quality audio and it's just made for two people to talk to each other and record it or three people, you know, so you can stream it to somebody. That's right, all we need, right. man. Right. A voice protocol that was based on uh, or programmed from the point that people are going to be using high audio quality gear with this. They want their signal to be loud and not click or distort. I mean, maybe something with some kind of built in real time software compression or something. Something that. Uh, you well, know, Mumble, Mumble has that, but it's. People. Mumble has that, but it's not made for media people. But, it's made for gamers right. with those cheap headsets, like you said. Exactly. And when it's working, you can hear it crackling like static i know it yeah. has it but it doesn't have it from a, a high audio quality point of view it has it from a i'm in my mom's basement playing halo right kind of well we got rid of the crackle but we still have what i'm calling the sprites sprites are like fairies but it's like we we have little ghosts in the machine occasionally mumble has a little like kind of which i heard a minute ago on you so yeah you know, I just, oh, my wife just went out to go shopping and she's wearing a t-shirt that says, all governments are corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Has she worn that in public in Wyoming yet? No, she just got it. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, because in Wyoming, you know, people probably think governments are corrupt, except for the good old U.S. of A. You know, or, they think the US, or they think the federal government's corrupt and, and everyone should be state government only. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, I believe that, that a year ago. We'll talk about it all. We'll talk about that, my, my progression when we get back from selling things. 
Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Yo. Hello. Them. Hello. Yeah. Hello. All right. So. Uh, I, I, I know. Was, yeah. It's an important cel- day for you, isn't it? <laughs> oh, not today. It was about five days ago. I celebrated my anarchiversary, which is my one year of having passed the threshold from minarchy to anarchy. Like, how did you keep track of that? Did you, like, write it down? Like, hey, no. I'm an anarchist now. Or was it, no. like, having your first period and your like, <laughs> mom and all that? Or like, how did that work? Having my first period with my mom? What? <laughs> Don't telling your mom. You know, the little girl tells her oh, mom. Oh, okay. I missed period. that. Um, yeah. No, I uh, I was listening to the Fiend streaming feed, which people can listen mm-hmm. to by going to freedomfiends.com and clicking on the blue listen now. Uh, and when we're not doing a live show, when we're doing a live show like now, we rebroadcast it on that no matter what feed it's really on. Um, but otherwise, it generally plays a 24-7 streaming feed of every episode we've ever done, every Anarchy Gumbo, and a bunch of music that you and I do. Uh, and I was listening to one in the middle of the night, as I often do, because I like the sound of our own voices. I, I heard me say, you know, Nima, last night I went from minarchist to anarchist, and I explained like what uh, came to bring me to that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, name of this episode is, looked it up, and it was like, you know, it was like October 1st, a year ago or something. So I just passed my one-year anarchiversary. Score. Score. Congratulations, man. What do you you get yourself as a gift for your (laughs) anarchiversary? A gun. Is is it... uh Is it a copy of the Constitution with a big circle and a line through it? <laughs> with a bunch of question marks and things. No. Right? no. No. Paper is the first. <laughs> yeah, back when paper was valuable. Yeah. Now I think I think an iPod is the first anniversary. Uh I don't oh, know. I got every I, I got Maybe everything I need. It. I got everything I need except donations for the Freedom Fiends, which keeps us oh, running. There you go. Yeah. 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 Give us some donations, yo. Give Michael so, some donations too. So if people want to call in this is a no, live well, show. If what if was, you're a, okay, it's October seventh, October seventh, two thousand twelve. If you're listening on that date, you can call in at three zero seven two one five five one seven one. That's three zero seven two one five five one seven one, or Skype to the username Kitty Feet One. Yes, and I think I remember what did it for you. I'm gonna try to see if I got this right. You were saying, I believe, when you turned the corner from minarchist to anarchist, that it was. Mike DeLuna said something to the effect of, well, if you're going to follow the non-aggression principle completely, you can't believe in any state. Uh, there's, no, there's, there, that was part the of it. still violates the non-aggression That was part of it, but that was, that was planted in my head. The thing that made me in- internalize that was actually watching Ron Paul interviewed on The Daily Show. And, ah, um, I remember that. Yep. You know, I remember watching it and thinking... If only he would embrace his inner right. anarchist, because I know right. it's there. If if he could say, John, John Stewart, everything we're talking about here violates the non-aggression principle. John Stewart, you are pointing a gun at my head when you when you advocate for these kinds of status things, and I can't condone people pointing guns well, at other people. Ron Paul was politics. was a, is a politician, but he was absolutely sounding like an anarchist in that interview, and I was waiting but for could, John he Stewart to go all the way though. He because he he's to a say, politician. Because he's a politician, and I think that's why he he didn't do as well as he could have. You know, if Ben Stone, <laughs> if he'd run for it, anarchy president, you mean if he should have run for anarchy president like Adam <laughs> Kokesh? Speaking of Adam Kokesh, uh, he did an interesting podcast recently where he talked to, about the joys of beating some guy up. He beat some guy up recently, and a lot of people have been taking him to task for this. Like, oh man, that's not going to help him as his position of the king of the non-aggressionists. But <laughs> I actually listened to the whole thing, and I was like, uh, I, I, do, I like this. 
you know. <laughs> Well, it's, he didn't aggress. So in the no, story, the way he told it was it, self-defense, it was, but people could say he took it too far. But it's kind of like, I don't know. First of all, I would be I think you'd be hard pressed to find an ex-Marine who, if someone messes with them seriously, is just going to push the guy away. You know, the, those guys are trained to fight. And it's, you know, you can take the fight out of the you take the Marine out of the fight, but you can't take the fight out of the Marine. And uh, secondly, you know. If you just hit a guy once when he's messing with you seriously and trying to break your camera and, you know, trying to get in your face and trying to slug you, if you just hit him once, he's not necessarily going to go away. I think most people's problem with it was how much Adam seemed to enjoy this, like that's breaking the non-aggression principle or something. But I don't know, man. I've been in a lot of public gatherings where somebody is messing with everybody like that guy was, and I, I wished someone like Adam would have dealt with them. Right, right. Yeah, um... I guess I feel the same way. You know, it, it was almost distasteful that he seemed to have some kind of enjoyment, but he did. I don't know if he felt guilty about it, but he did kind of feel like, okay, I mean, I understand this isn't something I'm supposed to get glee out of. Um, you know, he didn't feel to me like he was being an a-hole or like he was doing something wrong uh, when he was talking about it. I, I think, and, and also, if you are preventing aggression, you are doing something morally right, right? I mean, if you're if you're yeah. engaging in self defense, and also, you know, if if it's a natural law thing, if we're right in that, that that in natural law, it's okay to defend yourself. Uh, wouldn't your body naturally reward you for something like that? Wouldn't you feel yeah. some kind of level of victory or some kind of emotion or endorphin rushing through your body, saying, "Hey, I won the fight! Yay!" I mean, I, it feels like if, if this is natural law, then there'd be some kind of evolutionary thing inside of you that would give you pleasure from defending yourself or defending um, a group that you're in from an attacker. There you go. Yeah. And he, you know, who knows what that guy would have done. He might have been defending the group, too. You know, I mean, because, well, that guy was going around messing with other people. Right. And I think what he did was he was drunk or high or whatever and like pick the biggest most muscular guy like uh, uh target acquired must be you know <laughs> yeah 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 um i also i i liked that's the first time i seen uh derek j's contribution to uh to adam versus the man and so uh big ups derek j i kind of like that that format of going back and forth between uh derek and adam it's nice yeah and you know i mean that's that's uh that's voluntarism in action when you can have like a big muscle bound straight dude with a sidekick who's a you know skinny funny cute gay guy that's that's how the world should be man <laughs> it is it Derek is. rocks yeah. Derek, Derek was like perving over pictures of me from when I was like 23 and really skinny it was great I posted <laughs> yeah, this picture of me <laughs> in the fiends in the fiends diet post I posted some before and after pictures from you know about two years ago and then now to show the how you know how I was really fat two years ago and how in the past month I've become just kind of fat and then I was like I wasn't always like this before you know and I showed some pictures of me when I was on the heroin diet where my exercise was doing push-ups on many beautiful women you're, a night you're rock star pics man that's what yeah you don't have to be shy yeah and you know there's a picture of me when I was 23 and when I was 27 when I was 23 I was skinny and really cute and when I was 27 I was like really skinny and really cut because I was like doing a lot of physical labor moving amps around doing push-ups on ladies and uh i, I kind of look like a god in that picture and uh I, I posted it and a bunch of women were like oh my god wow and like a couple ex-girlfriends of mine were like man i remember you were hot and then derek j was like yowza i was like yowza. wow even the boys like it all right i'm doing i was doing yeah. something right yeah. Well, I yeah, also had the about it. So I also had like the word "slut" deal. written on my chest in magic marker in that picture nice. playing bass. Nice. And what do you mean I wasn't homophobic about it? We were playing gay bars, and you know, I was That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I was not you, beyond yeah. uh, playing with boys if there weren't any girls around back then. Yeah, yeah. Would you play with Derek? I'm married, man. I'm married. <laughs> I don't know. My wife and I played with some other women early on, first couple of years of our, uh, but we haven't done it in a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just kind of satisfied okay. with everything now, you know? Good. good. It was a California thing. It was a California thing. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a Texas thing. It's not a Wyoming thing. No, no. Yeah. yeah there's like, there's so I'm much, there's so much good Christian Republicanism in the water here that, you know, it just makes you not want to swing with your wife. <laughs> Speaking of that, I really loved that, uh, that onion article you sent me about the no Homer burger. Oh yeah, yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> what was it? The the um, Chick Fil A has done the the good old American home f fag bashing burger or something. Fag bashing. That was it. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> with no homo ham. That was no was homo honest. ham. No it was homo. Was on blue kind of thing with blue cheese yeah. and, and no homo ham. Yeah. 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 You know the um, thing is with with Adam. Getting back to Adam, if somebody done to me what that guy did to him, I'd have a gun out. Doesn't mean I'd shoot the guy, but I'd have a gun out. I'd be backing away from him and yelling. Uh, that that was the unanswered question I had watching the thing. Was he didn't uh, need to pull his Adam gun not out? Walk around armed or what? Well, I think it was in D.C. So when he's in D.C., he doesn't. But he lives in Virginia. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he didn't need to pull a gun out. He's a big muscular guy, so that helps. Well, yeah, I don't know. I take the Biggie Smalls thing. F F fighting. I mean, I got my gat. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we gotta sell some things here. All right, worms. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. New Philippines. Michael Dean? Yeah. How y'all doing? Yeah. We just had a correction about Adam Koresh. I mean, Adam Kokesh. <laughs> you always do that. It's hard not no. to. Um, Bad Michael It happened Bad in, Michael. someone said, it happened in Vermont, dude, and he didn't just hit the guy. He sat on the guy's torso so he couldn't move and repeatedly hit him in the face. That's not self-defense. That's teaching the guy a lesson. Which I don't know if this person's defending him or not, but uh, I didn't know it was that's quite that, man. but I don't know, man. I... I'm not going to write I guess Adam. That's a good point. I mean, hearing hearing Adam tell a story about what happened and hearing other eyewitnesses are two different things. Yeah. So, uh, of course, if, if there was something untowards about it, I, I'm not sure if I completely trust Adam to tell us what those things were. I still say his, you can take you can take the marine out of the fight, but you can't take the fight out of the marine. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I guess. I guess wailing on the guy's face is definitely wrong, but uh, Adam also does a lot of MMA training, and so if you mount somebody like that in that position, that's sort of what you do. That's kind of instinct. And so if Adam was in fight mode, I could definitely see something like that happening without any kind of malice necessarily on Adam's part. Yeah. Well, you know, they say, and this is a gun thing, but I think it would apply to -to hand-to-hand combat, you know, in in the heat of the moment, you resort to the like lowest level of your training, like the, the lowest right. level of thing that you're really, really good at. You know, if you like if you're good at just shooting a target point blank at five feet, but you also sometimes practice trick shooting and like, you know, interesting, I don't know, whatever in in a fight, you're going to resort to like the thing that, you know, the lowest thing that you know best, which is just bam, 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 whatever, you know, the thing and, you know best. Yeah, yeah. you're going to you're, you're going to go with with what works, right? I yep. Mean, so moving not being on. Cheap, that's just being effective. <laughs> moving uh, on. Are you ready to move on? Okay. I'm ready to move on. I don't know. Do you want to talk about Adam mounting people on the chest more? <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess we could sit there and speculate about what happened and what it means. But we well, weren't should, there. We didn't uh, see it. Yeah. Well, does somebody well, have some video? This, this, this no, but the you know the person that's telling me this could call in if if they want at uh, that's true. Three oh seven. That'd be great. Three oh seven. What's our number? I don't know. Three zero seven two one five five one seven one. Yep. So um, yeah, I wanted to talk about Scott. Um, about Scott Beezer. No, Scott Beezer. yeah, Beezer. Beezer. I asked him, is it Beezer or Beezer? He said it rhymes with geezer, so we can remember yep. it now. Scott Beezer. I'm glad that because I've always been calling it him Beezer. So I guess I just got <laughs> who actually posted on our blog today. He said I I knew a a guy I knew who carried without a carry concealed carry permit told a concealed carry permit holder that he's a collared dog. The dog did not like being called a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but not. Um, but uh, Scott, Scott Beezer, actually, 
he is amazing. He's uh, done a lot of work, uh, a lot of great anarcho-libertarian uh, art in the form of graphic novels. Uh, he's currently working yeah. on this thing called Quantum Vibe, which is it's my favorite graphic novel right now. I definitely check it out a few times a week. Uh, he posts the new strip in it daily, um, so it's an ongoing story. I really wish it was finished and I wasn't finished reading it so I could sit there and, you know, read it <laughs> hours at a time, which is what I did with all of the content on BigHeadPress.com before I got to the point where I read literally all of it. And so now I have to wait every day patiently for Scott to post new stuff. Um, Quantum Vibe is is definitely amazing. It's um, I think it's set like 500 years in the future, like 25 hundred um you know ad although i think at this point it's it's sa it's like space age and they started the calendar over again um but it is it is definitely amazing it follows this this girl named nicole oresme um uh, she gets this job with this guy she doesn't really know much about him at the time but uh it turns out he's he's lived for a while and um you know because in this fictional world, people actually can rejuvenate their bodies. So death really isn't a problem anymore unless you're like murdered or you decide not to do a rejuve. Um, but she talks to this guy that's been around pretty much, I think, since our time. And uh, he's done a lot of things to advance mankind. Uh, you know, uh, I think space travel, things like that, are things that have helped that. And what he's doing now is he's trying to, uh, he's working on research to get us to travel into other dimensions. So it, it's moving past the idea that uh, we need – well, it, it's not moving past, but there's the idea that when there's a frontier, there's a lot more freedom, right? You know, Because you don't have the establishment because there's, there's nothing there yet. There's, there yeah. hasn't existed people long enough in that, that place to create an establishment, so there's more freedom. Uh, and he's trying to do that with other dimensions, not just other planets or other galaxies. And so um, – we, it hasn't gotten to the point where he's done that yet, but that's sort of what he's working on. You know, I should interview him for uh, Anarchy Gumbo. I really should. Beezer, yeah, you should. Yeah. Or, or I could. I mean, that'd be something since I'm actually kind of a fanboy. Uh, <laughs> well, I've met I him. Love, I've had a, I've had a steak with him. You have. An, you, have an, you haven't. You haven't read Quantum Vibe all the way. No, through. but I've read all all the stuff he's done with El Neil Smith. And, like uh, uh, Roswell, Texas. Yeah, and it's awesome. And uh, Probability Brooch. Yeah. Yep. In fact, you were telling me to read those uh, when I first met you. Well, they actually, for, for those were actually important in my um, envisioning of how Lib Bear would work. I mean, yeah. you know, some of them are cowboy days and some with a, with alternate history, you know, where like uh, right. things turn out differently at the Alamo is one of them. And then some of them are, yeah. you know, a future techno Lib Bear. But in all of them, everyone's got armed, even children, and there's very little yes. violent crime or theft. Very little. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it that That's way. That's one of my favorite uh, imagery in um, in Probability Brooch, which I Scott Beezer drew that, right? He, he, yeah. El Neil, it was El Neil Smith's words, but Scott Beezer's drawing. You know, I don't um, know if he had any input in writing any of those. I think there's some that they wrote together and then some that El Neil Smith wrote and then Scott Beezer illustrated. Um, I just consumed them as like, oh my God, these are great. You know, didn't even like, I don't know when most people listen to a great song, they don't go, I want to know who played rhythm guitar on this and who played keyboards. They're just like, <laughs> man, that song is great, which is kind of how I consumed them. Um, yeah, but yeah. now he's doing his own thing with a relative, right? The, uh, co-person. Uh, yeah, it looks like, looks like Zeke. Zeke. Beezer. I don't, yeah. I don't really know how Zeke is related to Scott, but. Usually, if, if there are two people working on something and they have the same last name and they're not related, they'll say no relation, just like Uncle Ruckus always says, Uncle Ruckus, no relation. <laughs> um, but that's, of course, for himself, but I, I imagine they must be related in some way. I don't know. Maybe we Who's should, Uncle Ruckus? Maybe we should interview Scott next. <laughs> well, he could call in, too. Who's, he does listen yeah. to The Fiends. I mean, we actually okay. reconnected recently because he posted on Twitter and someone forwarded it to me. He said, you know podcasts are great and right now i'm listening to the freedom fiends yeah i saw that i saw that yeah. i don't know if he said it in that voice and right now i'm listening to the freedom fiends i love that i, I doubt love it. sharing art i love that we're, we're making our sort of goofy podcast art and at the same time i'm looking at his art and i read it and consume it daily. <laughs> yeah uh, and comic yeah. books are great there should be um we're gonna actually talk on the next episode about someone else who's doing comics wrong but this is doing comics right 
We're going to save that for another. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to. We don't want to put our praise up against beef <laughs> against someone else. Although I've had beef with Scott, like shared yeah. actual meat beef, and it was good. Yeah. I mean, I bring that up a lot, but it's like it was a it was a pretty cool moment for me, you know. And uh-huh. actually, uh-huh. we're at a table that included a lot of people, including Anthony Bichard, and he was talking so much I didn't get to talk to Scott uh-huh. Beezer Anthony's much. Anthony's talker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a lobbyist. He, he can't stop being uh, a lobbyist even at dinner. Does Beezer live in Colorado, I'm guessing, or some, somewhere um, in the Mountain West? I'm not going to out him. I don't know if that's public okay. information, but uh, oh, okay. this we a bunch of people drove to this open carry dinner in Cheyenne at a truck ah, stop, okay. really good steak place, and we you know nine yeah. of us open carried. It was before I moved, DJ and I moved here. We came through Wyoming a month before we moved here to decide which city to move to. And we went all over the state for like eight or nine days and decided Casper. And uh, okay. But in Cheyenne, we met up with a bunch of people and had dinner at a steakhouse and actually kind of scared some cowboys because we were all open carrying. <laughs> okay. okay. Like they, it was like, that ain't right. You know, I'm sure these guys probably had a, had, probably had a revolver out in their glove box of their pickup truck and maybe a rifle behind the seat. But they were like, don't be showing that off in here. That's so ridiculous, man. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, I think things should be like Scott Beezer Jerome in the probability brooch where, yeah, little kids carry guns on their hip and nobody thinks anything of it because it's not about inanimate objects uh, and which which pieces of metal or plastic are incorrect or immoral because pieces of metal and plastic can't be immoral. It's about it's about the personal values and who you are. And so if you can trust somebody, you can trust them with a the gun, right? It just yeah. seems common sense to me. Um, and I'm also looking at Big Head Press right now, and it looks like Scott Beezer also uh, draws or works on Escape from Terra, which I I guess I kind of knew that, but I was hesitant to brag about Escape from Terra too. But that is that is also one of my favorites. I can't tell if, if I like that more than than um, than Quantum Vibe or not. But uh, just go to BigHeadPress.com. Read all the stuff. It's all amazing. It is especially great if you're at work and you want to kill some time and be entertained and learn about liberty at the same time. There's a lot of sexy women in his comics, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sexy yeah. In, in, fact, a really, in a in really fact, non-standard the, way. Right, but also in a standard way. In fact, some of them say, um, <laughs> this is not work appropriate. If you're at work, please don't click on the <laughs> link because the next script is has... Yeah, boobies. We'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We've got a go three soldiers. boobied women. No, not yet, but we'll see. Want to search porn in private, or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as seven fifty a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nageradio.com. That's nageradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. Yo. Yo. It's me. What's up, Michael? Yo. Yo, 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 yo. I got a very special caller online. Uh, I but feel before, very before, blessed by his presence. Before the special caller, we have something to play. We do. But hey, you, you probably want to wait until the, the bump music is done playing. So I will. I know how things work. Company. I know how it works, Nima. Do you? Do you really? Yeah. You better. All right. You better ask no. somebody if you don't. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Come Nima. on. Come on. Wrap it come up, me. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. All, right, All right. Here it is. Go for it. Uh, uh, live, oh, live radio. So is that how it works? I guess okay, you know shush, how it works, huh? Shush. 
All right, here we go. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum the vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system. On a secret mission, to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from Yo. Yay. Yay. So um, <laughs> we have a very special guest in the studio here today. He just showed up in my door. And uh, Scott Beezer. Scott Beezer, how you doing? Hi, pretty good. How you guys doing? Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, yeah. What's up, man? You make this comment. Well, I was listening to the show, and uh, you hear, hearing you uh, give me all the props and talks about my strip and my work, but there were a few gaps in your information that I thought I'd kind of clear up for you. One of them being, uh, I did. I never did any of the art on Escape from Terra. I uh, uh -huh. I was the co-writer essentially. Uh, uh -huh. Sandy Sanford, who comes up with the stories, would write them in short story form, and then I had to adapt them into script form. Uh, okay. A comic book script is sort of like a movie script. You know, you have description of the action, and you have the dialogue separated right. out. And I had to set that up and kind of tweak the story a little bit to fit the the different medium. And then that was passed on to uh, one of two artists. Uh, the original artist on this was was uh, Lee Oaks, who was uh, uh, Fort Collins dude. And uh, he did the strip pretty much by himself for the first couple of years. And then he started getting burned out, wanted some help. So we brought on the second artist named Layla Del Duca, who is from Denver. And uh, they kind of tag teamed on it, which is why some people might notice that the art style would kind of change rather drastically from one week to the next as we went mm -hmm. uh, to the different story arcs. But, you know, that's how that worked. Okay. Well, what's going on with and, the uh, Terror? Because <clears throat> Zeke Beezer is my son. Oh, and uh, ah. he's, he, he helps me on the art. He's also an, uh, uh, a budding artist in his own right. He's... Uh, uh, twenty, just about twenty-two now, and uh, is going to uh, L, uh, the community college and uh, doing art studies, and and he essentially adds the tones under my line art. Oh, okay. So okay. Uh, yeah, just a couple, just a couple little you know trivial bits of information I thought I'd kind of put in there, okay. so you, so you guys know what's going on here. Hey, fair enough. I mean, that's that's why we say or Scott Beezer could call, and then you call, and it's amazing. And then I did, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I took the hint. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Since, since we're talking about Escape from Terra, though, uh, what's going on with it now? Because it's it sort of stopped short. Is there going to be more? Yeah, to the well, story, it, it's on hiatus uh, mainly because uh, <laughs> the company Big Head Press is essentially owned by my brother Frank, and okay. uh, he's uh, you know he he's been putting a lot of money into it, and his resources are limited. And my time is limited. And we were noticing that we were getting pretty good reception or getting pretty good readership on the internet, but our book sales were just not up to what we needed to be to, to you know, mm. cover expenses. And so what we decided to do is instead of trying to do two features simultaneously and and lose money, we'd try to narrow it down to one and, and put more effort into marketing okay. and, and advertising, which is why we did the commercial jingle you guys just played, which uh, we paid for. Uh, which is incidentally that's done by the magnificent Hannah Hoffman, who uh, yeah. operates out of out of Brooklyn, I think, and has done some uh, other jingles for uh, Free Talk Live and does some pretty hilarious uh, song parodies. If you you know go over to her site and listen to her SoundCloud, is you know, they'll entertain you for for a good bit. Is is she the and, gal that does the real estate commercial, the Porcupine Realtors yeah, the, the dot com? Porcupine Real okay. Estate, and also the uh, the pork therapy jingle, and she also did uh, a Ridley Report jingle, and okay. now she's done one for us. So okay, and which, I, would I'm she be really uh, against it. me making it into like some kind of dubstep or hip hop remix with it and playing that one <clears> too? <throat> <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I don't know how she'd feel about it, but uh, I don't I don't mind. You know, it's you kind of interesting okay. to see how that turned out. Well, don't yeah. you own it if you bought it? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, we Big Head Press owns the right to it. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll just kind of, as, we'll as director of Big Head Press, I'll say, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and do it and uh, see what see what that uh, turns out okay. like. Okay. Nima, do it and then run it by him. And then uh, if he likes it, use it in the uh, the interview you're going to do with him for next Saturday's Anarchy Gumbo. Uh, there we go. Because I usually do make a different uh, musical intro sometimes when I when I do interviews. So, yeah, maybe I'll do that. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. So, Scott, uh, how did yeah. you, how did, I mean, I, I, there's so many things I want to ask you, but um, how do you come up with with such, with, with the ideas, like, for, for instance, Quantum Vibe, uh, I mean, do you do a yeah. lot of research into into what you think, um, you know, what where science is now, or is it is it a lot of fantasy and just imagining things? Because I feel like a lot of things are detailed, uh, and and there is some kind of scientific backing. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what goes into writing um, and imagining the basic, or, or not the basic, but but writing and imagining the technologies that you show us in your stories? Well, the technology is essentially just me keeping up with popular science, and I watch a lot of. Uh, you know, the science channels and discovery and I read the uh, popular science and, and I don't know, I, I, I don't really claim to be an expert in any of the stuff I talk about, but I, you know, I pick stuff up from a variety of sources and I, I use what seems interesting and I use what, what seems to advance the story. Are printable guns going to play any role in any upcoming strips? Uh, that seems to be some, some science. You know, I've been that's thinking almost... about that because you know I, I heard about the, the fellow in Austin that was yeah. trying to do it, and then the uh, the outfit that he was renting the printer from took it back. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I actually kind of... I made that guy Cody Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. This is going to be cool. someday when you know I stand before the Lord and He reads out my resume and sees whether it's worth coming into heaven or not because I made good stuff or not. Um, I contacted him <laughs> really early on, and I was like. You got to do an interview. And he's like, I don't know if I want to do interviews. He was real meek. He was really like, I talked him into it. I coached him. I did the first interview with him. And like three weeks later, he's like getting flown to London to speak at events and stuff. And he's up there standing like proudly proclaiming. But I brought that boy out yeah, of his yeah. shell. Oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, well I, hope, qu- I hope he succeeds. Vibe, they're kind and- of past guns. Like they use little rings that shoot. <laughs> beams kind of or something so uh, i think, I think oh, guns yeah. are well obsolete you know quantum there's, vibe, right? there's, there's kind of an issue that's going to be coming up with uh you know the the standard weapon in my comic strip is some, basically something called a zinger yeah that's which it. uh the reason it's called that is because it makes a zing sound effect and it's sort of like <clears throat> a, a pulsed energy beam weapon and okay. in a strip that's going to come up probably in about a month to six weeks uh, we're going to discover a major problem with this technology, Ooh. Okay. and uh, cool. and I don't want to spoil things any any further beyond that. But uh, Nicole is is going to start you know questioning whether she needs to start maybe going a little retro on her on her personal oh, weaponry. Really? So perhaps three awesome. uh, D printed guns might might uh, work their way into the strip after all. Hey Scott, have there you, you ever read a uh, 1951 sci-fi novel called *The Weapon Shops of Ishar* by A. E. Von Voigt? I haven't, but I've been. It's it's sort of on my list. I've I've heard of it. It's interesting. It's not. Yeah. It's not the greatest book, but the concept's yeah. interesting. It's a uh, you know not too distant future on Earth. Uh, they have guns that like can only be used in self-defense. It's kind of smart guns, which I don't really like, but it's very interesting for 1951 and right to bear arms kind of stuff. Sci-fi. Do you want to stay around right. for the next through the next break and talk after the break? Yeah, sure. All right, cool, man. Scott sure. Beezer on here yeah. now on the fiends. Yeah. A science fiction comic ah, adventure ah, there it is. from there it is. There it is. the press. Quantum vibe. I'll keep it recording. We'll have it in here twice. There are okay. colonies okay. on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system. On a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures Made with genetically engineered features And corporate villains crave the opportunity To steal a profit from others' ingenuity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum 
Hello. I love that. Hi, is this Steve Bostic, yeah. president of Red Size Smoothies? <laughs> yes, do you call right. it? Great. Um, I didn't love it at first. I was like, a, a jingle? And then now <laughs> now it's like, I want to wake up in the morning and put it on. <laughs> that's that's the power of a good jingle, man. Thanks for some contact right, issues. Recording? I Are play it like two or three times a day just to jazz myself up. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that? We missed the beginning of it. I had you down. Oh, I sorry. I said that uh, I we I've been sitting on this thing for about three weeks since uh, you know we had ironed out the first draft of it, and then we had to take some time to iron out a few kinks in both the song, and also there was some confusion about getting the contract sent back and forth. It just you know just, we thought it was coming an email, and she sent it to our PO box, and we were looking for it there, that kind of thing. So uh, I've just been playing it, you know, several, you know, not several, but maybe three or four times a day just to energize myself to keep working. Nice. All right. We're back here at the Freedom Fiends. Uh, we've got extra special caller now, Scott Beezer. How amazing is that, Michael? Uh, that That's not the first time that's happened where we're, like, talking about some other person <laughs> in the liberty movement and how awesome they are. I think and it's the first time it, I think it's the first time it's happened where they didn't call to yell at us because we were talking about someone in the liberty <laughs> movement. <laughs> no, no, no. Ben, ben Stone, the bad Quaker. Sometimes we'll talk about him and he'll he'll call up and be like, hey, I'm the bad Quaker. Yeah, well, you know, he's retired and he lives in the... the um, the retiring home for old violent bikers. So he has a lot of free time on his hand. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, in case you uh, are just joining us, we've got uh, Scott Beezer on the line. He's an amazing uh, artist. He does liberty oriented media that is just uh, mind blowing. It's also great science fiction, even if you're not uh, into liberty, which I don't know why you wouldn't be. But um, he, he writes a strip right now called Quantum Vibe, and he's done a lot of other beautiful strips in the past you can go to bigheadpress.com and check all those out i remember when i first discovered it uh any sp spare moment i had at work i'd be reading and I, I literally read through all of the comics in like uh two weeks and was like ah i want more and so unfortunately now i'm waiting every every day for the for the new quantum vibe strip to drop yeah um i actually yeah, uh, read um two of your things with L. Neil Smith, uh, Probability Brooch and Roswell, Texas, all online. You know, you click on one image, it takes you to the next, like, I don't know, 700 panels or something. And mm -hmm. I actually, and they take a while because you got to read all the text of them and look at them. There's a lot to take in. The art's great. Uh, I actually read one of them in one sitting of about 12 or 14 hours and one of them in two sittings. And I remember like three or four hours into it, I was dehydrated, I was hungry, and I had to, <laughs> and I had to pee really bad. And I didn't notice that because my body was not engaged. I was so <laughs> enthralled with it that I was like, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to piss myself and faint from lack of liquid and I got to get up and take a break. And I like ran in, peed, got some food, got some water, came back and parked myself in front of it. It was that good. Nice. Well, geez, I wonder if I should put a health warning on the strip. You might have Maybe to. You Someone might sue you, and they, you know, some agency yeah. might cut you cut you off for like medical endangerment there. Yeah. Well, I had to give main props to Neil for that because he's a great storyteller. And in fact, uh, you know, I sort of got into this uh, graphic novel business and teaming up with him. Uh, I, I had uh, I had been working for uh, uh, computer games for about a decade and had kind of gotten out of that business and was kind of goofing around looking at looking at other possibilities. And a mutual uh, acquaintance of Neil's and mine said, you guys should team up and do a graphic novel version of the probability brooch, which was Neil's first uh, novel and still probably his most popular. And so now wait, what's, we did. The, what's the name of the person that hooked you up? Because as someone who often match makes people, and I kind of consider that my goal on earth and like nothing mm -hmm. I need credit for, but I like to credit people when they do that. Who was your matchmaker? Uh, well, that's kind of a sad story. That was Carrie Pearson, who is no longer among the living. Uh, he uh, was often known on on the uh, on the on the email boards and on the message boards as Lux Luker, and uh, uh -huh. he kind of pulled a Jim Henson. He got pneumonia and waited too long to go see you know get treatment for it and wound up dying from it. So yeah. 
But uh, so this is sort of uh, part of his living legacy. He was also the guy that put together the uh, the sort of animated uh, explanation of libertarianism and the non-aggression principle that kind of made the rounds on YouTube for a while. And I don't, I'm not quite sure if you know which one I'm talking about. He used a lot of kind of icon stick figures and uh, explaining uh, self ownership and. Uh, the relationship of, uh, you know, uh, how people can either interact uh, peacefully or how they can not. And, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go find the link sometime in, in Sanity and then you can see what I'm talking about. Maybe you can I'll, find, as, I'll find I'll find it right now. What's his name or what <clears throat> what name was it under? Uh, his name was Kerry Pearson, and I believe it was spelled P-E-A-R-S-O-N. K with a, is Kerry with a K or a C? Kerry, Kerry with a K, K K-E-R-R-Y. And uh, I could be wrong about that. He in his uh, his nom de voyage. Oh, it's the philosophy much, of liberty. I'm looking at it right here. The did, philosophy. Did, that's it. Did yep, Ken Schoolin? Ken Schoolin helped with it, right? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll put that in today's show notes. Uh, I'll link it. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Um, cool. So yeah. So you know, Carrie Scott. was Carrie was sort of the catalyst, but you know there. Were, there, we had a, a, a mailing list sort of group back in the days before Facebook and, and you know, the social media that we have with Web 2.0 where a bunch of us people that were basically fans of Neil would get together and chat about things, and that, that's how that came up. And uh, so I shopped the idea around to several different publishers <clears throat> and got turned down basically because nobody knew who I was and nobody in comics really knew who Neil was, and it was kind of a weird topic for them anyway. So I persuaded my brother Frank, uh, who was, works in the, the, uh, internet business. He's a high tech guy and he's got some pockets. And so I said, Hey, Frank, help me out here. Why don't you finance a publishing company so we can publish this thing? And so he said, Well, okay. And, uh, he's been losing money on it ever since. But, you know, <laughs> you know some, some people, some people in his, uh, income class, you know, they, they buy yachts and use that to pour money down and, my brother has a publishing company. Nice. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, done a lot of good for the world, though. I mean, uh, the website's pretty yeah, well, popular, he, isn't it? I mean, he, a lot of people read these. What is the website? You want to give out the website? Uh, Big Head Press. You know, uh, B-I-G-H-E-A-D-P-R-E-S-S dot com. And that's where you'll find all the stuff that we've published for over the last decade. And what's your new comic site called? Uh, the comic site is Quantum Vibe, Q-U-A-N-T-U-M-V-I-B-E dot com. Excellent. Yeah. So we've got about two minutes here, uh, <clears throat> and then we're going to bring it over and for other callers, but we're going to have you All come right. do an hour or more on next Saturday's Anarchy Gumbo. Sometime this week, you and Nima can get together and record that. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Yep. I definitely uh, look forward to it. I've got uh, plenty of things to ask you, but uh, yeah, our time here is running short. So uh, folks out there, you can have plenty more Scott Beezer and Freedom Fiends coming up uh, <coughs> for next Saturday's Anarchy Gumbo. It's going to be awesome. Yes. All right. Excellent. Yes. Well, cool, man. We Any, really Anything else you'd like to, to say before we hear the music playing us out here, Scott? <laughs> Oh man, uh, there's so much, and I can't, I can't think of anything. I got I'm something. Gonna... I got something. I think yeah. that it's important for lib pair to happen, for libertarian paradise to happen, to be able to envision lib pair and yes. what you do for a living. You do for a living is envision lib pair for us, or various ways it could work. Oh, that is my mission. Yeah, you know, to to you to essentially spread the ideas and also you know help the people that already have that idea visualize. What they're what you're aiming at? Yeah, so, yeah. When people say, "How would the roads work without the government?" You can say, "Well, here's one way of looking at it, and it seems to work yeah, well." We'll have flying cars. We won't need roads. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Where we're going, flying we bubbles. won't need roads. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's that's totally all true. right. That's totally true. Well, well uh, yeah. Thanks, so thanks, so thanks to you guys for all the props, and thanks to my readers, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you on the on the interview and later. Excellent. Scott right, Beezer, everybody. Scott. Worms. Peace. All right. On you, because uh, I wasn't sure there for a little bit. What's up, Yo. Michael? It's those darn Yo. fiends. It's those darn fiends. Yeah, right right under the wire there. Man, I can't believe Scott <laughs> Beezer called. That's so I know. awesome. You know, it'd be kind of... It's, it's really... It's like... You know, it'd be like when I was 19, if I'd been, you know... 
in my garage with my crappy little band. And I guess it wouldn't be like Jimmy Page showed up because I'm not a cartoonist. And so it'd be like, you know, if, oh, I don't know, if, if Abby Hoffman had shown up at my garage, you know? Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, I heard your music. I just decided I'd stop by. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have I fantasies know, like that. You know, I actually met a good friend of mine, lifelong friend of mine. I haven't talked to him in a while, but um, he's now a Wall Street attorney, so I don't really talk to him that much. Well, I don't know. I think he doesn't like that I like guns, too, I heard. But um, ah, I was like 15 or I was about 15 or 16, total hippie, wore like, you know, I had long golden locks, you know, and like little round granny glasses, like john lennon or something and wearing an old army coat that i'd painted psychedelic day glow paint all over and i was walking down the street <laughs> and i heard this like in chautauqua new york which you have to understand is like the the summer classical music capital of america and uh uh, uh i live in austin so we would have beef with that freaking new york no austin's live music capital man i said classical music classical, oh, classical. music Ah, I, dude, I just, the only I, fiddles in that town are playing bluegrass. There ain't no classical world. I mean, there's probably an orchestra there, but Chautauqua, New York is world renowned. Like, basically, it's only open in the summer. And you mean you square know, music. OK, I got you. Uh, I got you. Long hair music. Yeah. I mean, like like the, the, the first violin for the Austin Symphony Orchestra comes to Chautauqua and plays third violin in their orchestra. It's that kind of place. Uh, got you. OK, so okay. it's not known for its like shred guitar. I'm yeah, walking yeah, down but the it, but street. It is known for its uh, violent. Okay. Well, it's also known for like it's a dry town. You can't drink alcohol, and it was founded by really? nanny prohibitionists. Dude, we did a whole episode on this. I know, how, I know how, that, but I, I'd forgot that they were dry, and I didn't know they were founded by a nanny prohibitionist. Yeah, so okay, I was, anyway, I was, I was stoned. Wait. I was walking down the street, uh, and I heard this like blistering like van halen type you know death clock shred guitar coming out of this uh -huh. this little like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cottage house. Yep. I went up and knocked on the door. This middle-aged man, uh, who I learned later is like a corporate lawyer, is Bo's dad. It's a it's a dynasty of of lawyers. Um, his dad answers the door, and I said, uh, "Hi, I'm Michael Dean. Who's playing guitar?" And he said, "Why, that's my son, Bo." And I said, "Can I go listen?" And he said, "Sure." And let this hippie stranger into his house. You know, now they just shoot you, but not his family. But you know, people. <laughs> if you knocked on their door, you wouldn't get in the house now doing that. But his family would call the the cops and be like, "Yeah, but this was about nineteen. This is this is about nineteen seventy eight. It was a simpler time." And I I walked up into his room. He was sitting there with a, a guitar and an amp. I didn't even introduce myself. I walked into his room and said, "Play something really fast," and he did. And then we had introductions and became long friends. And. He's the guy that, like, I moved to D.C. from my square hometown. When I turned 18, like, two weeks later, I ran away from home. Basically told my mom at night, I'm moving to D.C. tomorrow. You know, got in, Bo went with Bo, got in his, you know, uh, Lamborghini or whatever it was and drove nine hours to D.C. And lived in his mansion until uh, his dad came home and let me live there about three more days and then kick me out because I wasn't showering. Why DC, man? Why not? Why not New York or LA? Why DC? Because I had an in. I had an in, uh, and uh, and I actually consciously thought about this. I thought about New York. New York was a little closer, and it was in the same state as me. I wanted to be uh, further away, so it'd be harder to come home uh, if things got hard. Uh, uh, and he was actually in Chevy okay. Chase, Maryland, which is like the you know rich wait, mansion. Wait, wait. Is it community. named after Chevy Chase, or is Chevy Chase named after? Chevy Chase is named after the city. The actor's named after the city. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I got kicked out and I ended up living in an abandoned building in New York city. Uh, and I've told this story, like, you know, wearing a tie and working in a health food restaurant, but like putting my tie on in the rear view me of a car every morning. Cause I was living in a factory and I, you know, I don't say that like people should feel sorry for me. Like I was homeless. It was like, I left the comfort, the boring comfort of my parents' home to go be homeless in DC and be a punk rocker. Cause it was exciting. Yeah, yeah. Those how did how did we get down this? Oh, meeting people in strange ways. I think that's it. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, um, this is a call-in show. Uh, if you feel like following Scott Beezer, uh, go for it. Be my guest. Call uh three zero seven two one five five one seven one. Again, that's three zero seven two one five five one seven one. You know, and, uh, yeah. I just remembered something else about Chautauqua. When I was like 11, I was at the fountain. Like there's a fountain in the town square there. And I was sitting there where, you know, it's kind of like 
the the agora, the, the where people would hang out, the central part. It's uh-huh. where I met the woman. I you know when I was fourteen, it's where I met the fourteen year old girl I first had sex with. We lost our virginity to each other. Uh, oh, that's but so sweet. When I was eleven, I was sitting there one day, and this guy comes up to me, and he's kind of looking at me from a distance. This man, and uh, you know, I was like, "See a kidnapper, a pervert?" I didn't even know what a pervert was yet. I was like ten, and. He talked to me and he talked me up. He was a, a documentary filmmaker and he wanted to cast me in a film as a young Hermann Göring, you know, Hitler's right hand man. And like, I later looked it up. I looked a lot like Göring at that age. You have kind of a Germanic look to you. Yeah, yeah I have blonde hair, blue eyes, and, you know, kind of stern features when I'm not old and fat like I am now. But, uh, you know, I, I was a striking young man, a uh, young lad. And I went and told my dad about it. And my dad got really creeped out. I don't know if he was creeped out that this older man was, you know, this middle-aged man was taking an interest in me and wanted to like take me away and do things with me. Or if it was, you know, he wanted me to play the role of one of the biggest monsters in history. I don't know. I didn't know who Gehring was at the both. time. But Sounds like it could have been both. Isn't Gehring the guy who <laughs> said, is it Gehring the guy who said I was just following orders? I think he is. Uh, I don't know. In don't the know Nuremberg you, trials. Uh, Gehring. How do, you, how do you even spell that? Man, I don't know. I don't know. Germanic. <laughs> it's, it's got umlauts and diacritical marks. It. It's G-O-R-I-N-G. G O R I N G. G O. G O. Look it up. I don't know. Yeah, well. Just following. Let's look up just ah, following orders. Quotes. Look at the picture of Gehring down the page. Uh, uh, on uh, Wiki? Yeah. Okay, Herman Gur. G O. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at that picture of Gehring. There is a picture of Gehring as an 11 year, 13 year old boy over on the left wearing a Nazi uniform. Uh, I could, I could be, you Honestly, know, this is old man stuff, man. I looked like him. I looked like him. Well, yeah, he's wearing his old man stuff. It's probably pre-Nazi, but uh, yeah, okay. I looked like that kid at that age, okay. well, except for the big ears. But I'm, they were probably uh, going to turn my ears back. Nuremberg interviews. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can find if if he's the one who coined that phrase. That would be uh, uh, an interesting. <laughs> someone, yeah, like as a child, someone wanted me to play the guy who possibly said I was just following orders. Nah, he's not. I'm looking at the Superior <laughs> Orders article on here. Nuremberg trials. Let's see who said okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mew. Transmitting Hitler's orders without even reading them. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually something somebody said, though. Uh, oh, it is. It is. is. It's, uh, was, it, was, was that an yeah. actual quote? Nuremberg trials. English, Only following orders. In language in the Australia. Nuremberg defense, it's called. And it was actually, Belhest of Bethel. Uh, Literally, an order is an order, is what they said. Uh, an order is an order. Yeah. Okay. Who said that's it, though? Um, ah, Wilhelm Keitel. And Alfred Jadal. Related to Harvey Keitel. Yeah. Fiend phone. Okay. Fiend phone. It's oh, going to be a great, great Fiend grandson phone. of Gehring Fiend correcting phone. everything we just said. Fiend phone. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Fiend. You're on the air. Who is this? Hey, Michael. This is uh, Isaac. Hey, Isaac. What's up, man? Uh, nothing much, man. I was just going to say that Nima's really, uh, his volume is much lower than yours tonight. Nima, turn up. I don't care about it the uh, fuzziness, right. man. I told you. Right. How come someone else didn't, you know, the Fiend's got to be on this, and we're going into a break. You want to stick around for after the break? It's going to be the last segment. Sure. All right. Sure. We'll do some sound okay. checks here on the Fiends. Yeah. Don't piss me off. Why? Anymore. Why? Why? Because I'm a guy who what has... You, what, no, are you, what are you going to do about it? I still you, have... You get act- him out me and punch me in the face? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I still have active yes. resentments going back to 1976. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Michael is a grudge holder. Okay, fine. Fine. I I rescind. I rescind. It's all you. <laughs> I will grudge all at you. you. I'm pointing a grudge <laughs> at your head, Dima. <laughs> no! All right, all right Isaac. Am I, got- am I too loud? Am, am I loud enough? No, you're great. You I, can I probably be turned down about... Two two tenths of a nun's cunt here. Yeah, two prepubescent girls. None. <laughs> Stop it! That's four. Right. I'm fining you one bitcoin, man. <laughs> Stop it with the underage crap. All right. Stop it. All right. Stop All right. it. All right. All right. 
I just I try to care. get us droned just, quicker. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't care when you say the you know the other end of it, but like creepy person, like I'd kick your ass. I would mount right, you and right, kick right. your ass. Okay. I don't care if you're okay. talking about you know. Hey, hey, you know what? Nuns, sexual. I don't care if you're nuns talking about. Don't sex, believe in sex either. I don't nuns, care if you're for, talking for, about for sexual nuns, tourism to you know to the New Netherlands where the age of consent is sixteen or something. But if you're talking about previous and girls, I will mount you and beat you myself. <laughs> dude, okay? dude, nuns I'm don't want to have sex you, either. I nuns don't want to have sex either. I find you one bitch. Bitcoin in my lib pair uh, theocracy, my isocracy, my rule of one. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair, I was just using it as a unit of measurement. I don't fucking you, care you if you curse, but if you're going to be you doing want. that, okay. Hey, we got oh, we got a caller here. I think so. Isaac, what's your question? Yeah, I want to know. Uh, I was watching Guns and Weed: The Road to Freedom, and you were using uh, look like Windex to clean your gun. <laughs> just, does it work? Did you think that was a joke? Some people thought that was a joke. No, I didn't think it was a joke. I mean, I didn't know anything about guns at the time. I just got into guns because of you guys. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, no, ne it is actually common for people to use Windex through the barrel and on the in internal action of any rifle that you're firing um, Cold Corrosive War. Corrosive ammo. Yeah, Cold War or earlier surplus ammo um, was made with primer primers that used... Fulminated mercury, I think is how you pronounce it, which actually, if you've watched Breaking Bad, you've seen the, the potential yeah. of fulminated mercury. That's what they used in old um, old primers. And uh, that stuff is really acidic after it's burned, and it will corrode the yes. internal workings of the metal parts of your gun, like the firing pin and the barrel and uh, the breech. Well, and the rifling. <laughs> It'll burn out the rifling. Yeah. And I, I've, I've uh, waited a day. Um, you know, I've I've poured um, I didn't pour Windex, but I poured hops down my barrel of my Mosin after shooting it, and just left it for a day or two before I could clean it. And you could actually still see little corrosions on the outside of the barrel, like um, like literally the edge of the barrel. So I I definitely cleaned it immediately after that. And Michael's got a point there with with yeah. trying to get neutralize that corrosive. Well, I recommend and Windex has ammonia in it, right? Which counteracts right. The, it's a base acidity. counteracting the acid to neutralize it. So. I would recommend doing hops isn't isn't alkali like uh, ammonia is so like ammonia. I would mm -hmm. I take the Windex out to the range with me when I'm shooting uh you know Mosins or AKs using Cold War cheap surplus com block you know former Soviet uh, satellite uh, ammo because you want to do it as soon as you're done as soon as you're done firing yeah. that rifle for the day you want to you know spray some Windex in on the bolt on the firing pin, in the chamber, and down the barrel. Uh, just do it real quick, and then then when you get home, clean it with hops. You know, it's not cleaning it, it's neutralizing the, the acids. The acid. Is there a reason why you guys use uh, old ammo like that? Yeah, cheaper. it's really cheap, man. It's, cheap, it's like 25 cents a round for battle rifle rounds. You know, it's like cheaper than hand like 9 millimeter ammo new, you know, and it's battle rifle. Cool. It's like accurate at, you know, a th I mean, not accurate, but it's deadly at like a thousand yards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it's, all you need anyway. I mean, we're not snipers. He's going to be making, you know, 1,300 yard shots. <laughs> not ridiculous. me. Not with a Mosin. <laughs> yeah. You could, yeah. though. You could. Uh, the guy who made, well, I guess, I don't know if he made Mosins famous, but uh, the guy who Enemy at the Gates is based on. Oh, yeah. Actually oh, yeah. shot with iron sights at 800 yards some German officers through a window of a building. Yeah. In, in the Battle of Stalingrad, so it's possible with the yeah. Mosin. Well, and I've with shot that same you know, ammo that we at, use at seven hundred yards, shooting up onto a hill where I can see really well. Not seven hundred yards vertical, but when we go out to that one place where we shot the movie, and there's the big hill on the side there, and uh, you know, I've sp sc scope spotted that with my rangefinder at you know six hundred eighty, seven hundred yards, and with yeah. the Mosins, you and I can both hit. I don't even know if like man size, but uh, you know, broad were, side of the barn size. If the, no, no, but if there were two or three men shooting at you, we'd be hitting uh -huh. one of one of them. They, the they'd Mosin. be running away. They'd yeah. be finding cover instead of maybe maintaining fire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But so yeah, that, that's, that's why the, we use that's it. That's the point of the Windex. But people thought that was it's, a joke. Like that's actually that is in the not just in the movie, but it's in the trailer for the movie. And there's a bunch of comments on there from non-gun people of like. Why are you putting? Is that Windex? That's got to be a joke, man. And the only—I mean, <laughs> you could use you could use diluted ammonia, but Windex in a is pinch, just in a it pinch. Comes, could you 
Could you piss down the barrel in a pinch? <laughs> uh, no, because urea is acidic. It would uh, do the opposite it, uh, of what you're trying I to do. It was basic. No, okay. You know, it's ureic acid is the main uh, component in urine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair Which enough. you can make gunpowder out of. I've heard. Okay. Okay. We don't get we don't give any instructions on making explosives here and there, but it's fact. It's history. During the Civil War, they would go around to farms, and people were supposed to save their urine and save their animals' urine. <laughs> I don't know how you get it, you know that anyway. Here, come here, cow. But uh, you know, and they'd take buckets of it and use it to make gunpowder. Okay. Okay. It's, not, it's so got about- nitrogen in it. What about what about cat piss? Because cat piss always smells like ammonia. Well, Would that, that gets you high, according to that <laughs> South Park where they're cheesing. The South Park. You know no, the that hallucination. Wasn't, that wasn't piss. That was like spray. Okay, you know like this. You know the hallucination they have in there where they're all flying through uh-huh. the booby the booby verse. That's based right. on a movie called Heavy Metal, and I've Heavy never metal. seen that. Yeah. I saw that yesterday. That. Have you seen that movie? No. You know, uh, after that South Park, somebody lent me Heavy Metal on VHS, and it's I was horrible. like, oh, I can't wait to watch it's it. Horrible. I never watched it. No, I, I watched. watched it. Well, it takes place in a couple different locations. I really like the New York City, not too distant future noir part, uh, but all the stuff in the alternate universe is just ridiculous. DJ and I watched about thirty minutes of it and went shopping at Walmart instead. The, is is the boobage adequate? At least, I mean, is there? Is There's there boobage everywhere, man. There's boobage everywhere. Yeah. In that. Okay. Major boobage. Yeah, but it's like that's really the, idealized. The like episode. there are no humans that actually look like this kind of body shape boobage. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's no humans that look like that, so you got to see them somewhere, right? I don't know. Like, I like I like Scott Beiser's better. His woman, women look like Beezer. 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 Sorry, he was just called. I know. <laughs> I, I don't. He's not a geezer though. It's hard to remember rhymes with geezer. Right. He's my age. <laughs> I'm a geezer. Uh, Isaac, uh, you anything ask, else you'd like you to, ask, to mention? Got, I think we're about to go out here. So you got to ask Scott what no, he thinks. I was think. going to say, you guys, a uh, great show. Keep it up. And I don't know if there's anyone else on the line, but uh, if there is, I'm gonna get off it. You guys take it easy, okay? Come on. All right, Isaac. Peace. Peace. Hey, you, you got to ask Scott Beezer when you interview him if he saw Heavy Metal, the movie, as a child and if it warped him And forever. if it influenced him? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I bet a lot of people took up the pen because of that or said, I could do this. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean- And he's the right age. Good... It was 1981 it came out when he, he was probably okay. drawing the- Drawing a lot by then, anyway. Drawing so. lots of boobs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I draw boobs when I doodle. I can't help it. I mean, I Boobie draw doodle? boobs and butt. You booba doodle? Booba doodle? I, I, I booba doodle. Yeah. 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 Booba doodle. <laughs> there was uh, some British study that uh, tried to figure out people's personalities based on how they doodle. Boobs. Um, and, uh, well, curviness meant you were relaxed and lay, laid back. So if you draw curvy boobs and butts, maybe you're uh, a nice, relaxed person who's comfortable boobies. with boobies. sexuality. Boobies. Um, boobies. Hard lines and edges meant you were stressed out. Boobies. I don't know if it is true. Boobies. Did, did, I, did I static there? Boobies. 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 Puppies. 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 Yeah. Poppies, boobies, and poppies are those YouTube? Or I guess those. <laughs> These are a few of my favorite things. I'm happy to let you know, and I want to congratulate you on letting you know that uh, you have brainwashed huh. me into wanting to run for Congress. Well, to put got, an like, what is this? This is the food team. Well, awesome, yeah. sir. Send us an email with Not the info. Tell us where you're running in Pennsylvania. Why are, why are we so hearing? Are you playing this, Nima? Uh, state House nothing. representatives. This is in, uh, right, what Alex you do? Jones. Send us an email. We'll plug your site. I gotta go quick. Why the hell go to is Malcolm Alex Jones in Roswell, Georgia, where our reporters were three months ago, four months ago, where they killed know, the man. old guy this with the no beans. criminal record? This is Alex Jones. Jones. The word is, Get the hell they off the of army in. Go ahead, go away, Malcolm. Alex you're Jones. on the air. Alex. Alex, hey, shut Alex. up. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Alex, um, calm down. Yeah, man. they did calm kill down. that guy. My mom We're actually gonna knew him. We're just going to screw girls uh, and Who is doing this? So it's kind of crazy. The I don't hear Alex Jones, man. I don't know I'm hearing Alex, Alex Jones yeah, taking the phone calls. The, the, they fortified the city council after our reporters. You're not hearing it. What is it, a million dollar fortification? I don't hear it. Oh, is it is it on the LRN yeah, studio? I have the LRN studio. Oh, Alex I hear it now. I hear it. Hello, but, uh, no, but oh, they shared. Right. They had to fortify Alex Jones because the our reporters came the freedom once. Fiends. And Shut and up, and Alex we've Jones. We've looked at the records. None of the police you were involved. You found constitutionalists. Well, you know the new system. You they found the constitutionalists. Get the fuck <laughs> off the <laughs> freedom fiends. So Carbon wannabe. Carbon wannabe. We're out of time for the other callers. Lord willing, I'll be back on the next central. Alex Jones, get the f off of fucking freedom fiends. Our republic is burning to the ground. We better save it. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs, what the hell was that? I have great news. GCN has created a. It was because the LRN studio was on, man. That was the feed. It was on. Just as easy as I had LRN studio muted, so I didn't hear it, and then I unmuted it, and I heard Alex Jones. That was fucked. But they don't play Alex Jones on LRN, do they? Somebody was watching it in the studio then, or something. Let me see. Let me see if. Who's on after us? It was you Ian. Want, hey, let's, let's jump over to Worms. Let's jump over okay. to Worms. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.